We'd like to welcome everyone this evening to the formal meeting of the Salt Lake City Council. I'm going to read a few rules and standards of conduct. Um, in order to support a respectful meeting, items that disrupt the meeting, intimidate other participants, or that may cause safety concerns are not allowed. And let me give you a few examples. Uh, council staff or security officers may ask you to open any large bags, purses, or backpacks. No cheering, jeering, clapping, or waving of signs uh, that may intimidate other speakers and cause disruption. So please refrain from such activities. Don't stand on the furniture. Don't lean against the painting. Uh, just be respectful for all those that want to participate and, and feel welcome to come up and uh, give their two-minute statements. Uh, so we're going to start the public hearing this evening, but we need to approve the meeting the meeting minutes of Tuesday, October 25th, 2016, which was a work session, Tuesday, November 1st, 2016, which was a work session, and Tuesday, November 15th, 2016, work session and formal meeting. So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay. So moved by Council Member Penfold and second by, was that you, Der uh, Derek? It was Derek. Okay. So Council Member uh, Kitchen and second by Council Member Mendenhall to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That motion passes. We're gonna move into the public hearings comment uh, and we're gonna dive right into the draft impact fee facilities plan. And I am looking for a motion on this. We have no one here oh, to speak I have on two, it? I have two cards. Great, and as I call your name, if you'll come forward, the second person, if you'll be ready for it, only two. Uh, Jesse Dean followed by George Chapman. Hello. I, I sort of wish that I was going a, a, after George, um, mostly because I feel like I'm the yang to his yin, but that's not happening for me tonight. Um, anyway, uh, I'd like to first thank this body for extending the moratorium back in November, and uh, several of you whom were responsible for voting for the original moratorium back in 2015. Um, it was the right thing to do to press pause and come up with a fee structure that helps address funding needs associated with our city's dynamic growth without being overtly burdensome on the development community. We are actually really excited about this new fee plan. We think it can work really well. And not, it's not only for downtown that I'm speaking, but actually for the entire city. But that's only solved really about 50% of the plan. The other 50% is really coming up with a great spending, spending plan on how to get this money out and into our community, both for parks, for fires, and everything else that we need. U.S. policymakers and also the administration have a role in terms of helping to determine how this money can be spent. And that is something that we are really excited about and it's an opportunity that should not go unwarranted. Otherwise, we will come back to this probably a few years from now. But like I said, I think downtown is in the midst of an, un you all know this, downtown is in the midst of an unprecedented residential growth period. And we'd like to see a lot of, of, this mo of the money that's being generated from impact fees put back into the parks and also address for new future parks as we continue to grow as a city. Some of these items are things that are already on the dockets and some of these things are things that we'd like to encourage you to encourage you to look at the downtown master plans and other items that have addressed some of these concerns. Um, but with that, I think that's about it from the Downtown Alliance. Thank you. Thank you. George Chapman. Okay, I've listened to all of your discussions on impact fees. What comes to mind is you're going way out on a limb on these, and I'm asking you to actually cut the impact fee proposal in half. For, for the last four years, this city has not been able to work with or handle or plan impact fees. And all of a sudden you're jumping in even worse than before, and my concern is you're gonna make a lot of people mad in the city, in the developer community, and also at the legislature. We're working together, I hope, on getting the legislature to have some flexibility on impact fees. But the people in charge of impact fees bills are gonna be very upset if you put in a great big impact fee increase. I'm asking you to cut it in half, make it more reasonable, make sure you can actually use the impact fees you're getting so you don't go overboard and have another moratorium. In addition, you will go a long way to helping convince the legislature you need more, we need more flexibility on impact fees. We need uh, more funding for police and that should be part of the impact fee thing. How do you convince the legislature if you're gonna have a great big impact fee increase? 
it makes sense to start slow, see if it works out, and then go up higher if it makes sense. You did this before. You increased impact fees significantly, and you had to pull them back. So I'm asking you not to go full bore, back off a little bit, cut them in half, and then implement them. Thanks for listening. I don't have any other comment cards. Is there any individual here that would like to speak in regards to impact fees? Seeing none, I Mr. Will Chair. Chair. You do LBA, I'll do this one. I move the council close the public hearing and schedule this item for potential action on Tuesday, December 13th. Second. A uh, motion has been made by Council Member Mendenhall and second by Council Member Penfold. Is there any discussion before we vote on this? None? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. Uh, the next public hearing that we have is Airport Terminal Redevelopment Program, the Budget Amendment, and I do not have any cards in regards to this. Any discussion? George? I don't have a card, a comment card for this. Oh, here we go. Maybe it's just one, and it's George. Okay, this is one of those things where you, where you also need uh, to work with the legislature. I'm concerned because as we, you discussed in the work session, you still don't know what you're gonna be doing with tracks. And that's an important issue. So maybe you can get tracks uh, funding through airport passenger fees, but that means you have to work with the legislature and going to the legislature and seeing maybe if there's some kind of compromise with the airport terminal project. If somebody at the legislature wants a wish list or something, I'm asking you to work with the legislature to work, to get more money essentially, because airport passenger fees in almost every other city now can be used for big skyway projects. Utah law has to change. And before you go through the airport terminal project, you should be working with the legislature to make sure it's a real grand entrance to Utah. I hope that makes sense. I have no other comment cards. Anyone would like to speak? Seeing none. Mr. Chair, I move that we continue this public hearing to December 13th. Second. A motion's been made by Council Member Penfold and second by Council Member Luke. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that passes, it passes unanimously. Uh, we are moving on to item three which the council will consider a motion to recess as the city council and convene as, a as the board of directors of the local building authority. So moved. Second. A motion by council member Penfold and second by council member Johnston, council member Kitchen. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We are now surprised the local building authority. All right, anyone want to make a motion? I don't have any comment cards. Do we have any comment cards for the LBA? No, we don't. Uh. So we will be making a motion on the Local Building Authority Budget Amendment number one. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that the board accept public comment and consider a resolution amending the final budget for the capital projects funds of the Local Building Authority for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2016, ending June 30, 2017. Second. Uh, motion by uh, board member <laughs> uh, Adams and second by board member Johnston. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Are opposed? We the right one. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Looking for a motion to reconvene as the council. Mr. Chair, um, I move that we uh, recess as the local board of directors of the local building authority and reconvene as the Salt Lake City Council. Second. Before you all vote on that, do we may, need I, and may I interrupt? Please. So uh, the motion from board member Adams was to hold the public hearing. It sounds like there were no cards, no interested speakers during the public hearing. Does the board wish to consider closing, closing the hearing and adopting the resolution before you adjourn? Uh, 
Yeah, that would probably be a good idea, wouldn't it? I would um, like to make that could, motion. Could we can re reconfirm that there are no comments for that public hearing? Because I think I was a little confused about when the public hearing was open and when it wasn't. So okay. could we just reconfirm that? Uh, Becky, we don't have any comment cards on that, right? Look for me first. No, okay. we do not. Then I will move that we close the public hearing and adopt. Uh, there's a motion by uh, Director Adams and second by Director Luke. Uh, any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes. All right, Stan. <laughs> I move that the uh, uh, Board of Directors of the local building authority recess, because we'll be reconvening later in this very meeting, <laughs> and reconvene as the Salt Lake City Council. A motion's been made. Do we have a second? Second. Oh, great. A uh, se motion by Council Mem uh, Director uh, Penfold and second by Director Mendenhall. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We, surprise, are now the City Council again. We are on to item C, potential action items, which are none. Moving on to D, comments, uh, questions to the Mayor from the City Council. The Mayor is not here, but we have Patrick Leary, who is the Chief of Staff to the Mayor. Uh, any questions for... Mr. Leary? I do, um, Patrick, and I, I don't know that you can address this, but I'm wondering if you have any information regarding uh, action the city's uh, taking uh, concerning the extreme cold temperatures we're expecting over the next couple of days and, and uh, relationship to people who find themselves sleeping outside. I think that, as you know from our earlier discussion, we're working with our community partners to make sure that if there are people that we can identify on the streets, that we can try to encourage them to get off the streets. Um, we're working with our law enforcement uh, uh, officers as well as eyes and ears out there in our fire department. So uh, given the extreme cold, I think we're taking every effort to identify those individuals and to do our part to try to get them off the street. Thank you. And is, uh, 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 tell me, I'm, I'm wondering if, if people ra encounter uh, individuals sleeping outside, is the best course of action to contact the police? Uh, yes, that would be the appropriate. Okay. All right, thank you. I have one question. Yes, please. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, Patrick, what kind of feedback loop do we have about whether or not individuals are being turned away at the emergency shelter or at St. Vinny's overflow shelter? and uh, considering that we have a budget amendment open until at least Tuesday of next week, how what are you hearing and what is the lines of communication like between the road home and, and us for that? On a daily basis, we're in contact with them, so we're getting feedback regarding what's happening at the shelter and uh, whether or not people are being turned away. So we will keep the council apprised uh, of what we hear as well. And do you have any current reports of people being turned away? I don't right now. Uh, no, we, um, we have been told that no one has been turned away. Um, that um, we are getting, uh, I apologize for stepping out, um, we are getting uh, weekly updates uh, from uh, the road home on uh, counts um, <coughs> across the entire. Hmm? It's, yeah, it, uh, and we get uh, um, weekly, uh, the numbers for the prior week, uh, and we have been told that um, no individuals have been uh, turned away. And the most recent head count, do you know off the top of your head? No, but I can pull it up. Thanks. We can move on. Any other questions to administration? All right. We are moving to item D2, comments to the city council. If you'd like to make a comment to the city council, we have staff on hand that uh, can help you get a card, fill it out, and they'll bring it to me if you don't have one. Uh, this, the same rules apply. Please don't clap, jeer, yell, cheer, stand on furniture. Uh, just be appropriate like it's in your living room, or maybe not. Uh, the first uh, name, I'll call one name, and then a second if you'll be prepared to speak. We have Liam uh, Lamalfa, if you'll come forward, and then George Chapman, if you'll be at the ready. Do you have microphones? I do. Okay, um, so so 
So, um, um, have you ever used a plastic bag? You probably didn't think much of it, but plastic bags are dangerous in many ways. This is why they should be banned. First of all, plastic bags are very common and last a long time. Did you know over 60,000 plastic bags are used in the United States every five seconds? Also, plastic bags take a thousand years to decompose, at least. If we don't ban plastic bags, there could be mountains of plastic by 2030. Secondly, plastic bags are dangerous to the environment. The first reason plastic bags are harmful to the environment is that they blow away easily. This may not seem like a problem, but plastic bags end up in the sea. Then, jellyfish-eating animals will think it's a tasty treat. The animals died soon afterward. Also, plastic bag factories create a huge amount of pollution. Finally, many countries are trying to decrease the amount of plastic bags that are used. For example, Ireland has put a tax on plastic bags. Since then, the amount of plastic bags that are used in Ireland has gone down by over 90%. Something helpful that some US towns have done is charge stores that buy free plastic bags. The state of California has banned plastic bags completely. As you can see, plastic bags are very dangerous. Animals end up eating them and dying. But we just keep making more. This is why plastic bags should be banned. In a few years, this planet will be in big trouble. We want the Salt Lake City Council to pass an ordinance banning the use of plastic bags and <coughs> banning use of plastic bags in retail stores. And here are the signatures of over 300 people who agree with me. So, Liam, we'll have staff come grab that for me. Okay. Mr. Chair, point of personal privilege. Could I ask Mr. LaMalfa where he attends school and what grade he's in? Um, I attend school at Uinta Elementary in fifth grade. Fantastic, and are you joined by other Uinta students? Certainly. Can we have each of them introduce themselves? Two of them look okay. very familiar to me, but okay. I'd love to know who everybody is. I am Jack Rich. Thank you. My name is Jaden Bunker. I am Ben Aldridge. I am Maxwell Oglesby. Cash Mendenhall. Edward Mendenhall. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yes, Aaron. And I can't help but ask for a moment of personal privilege. What would happen if I said no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am a mother bear, so I have my <laughs> little cubs down there. I wanted to tell Liam how proud I am of him and that this came out of his desire to, to take a stand on something environmental. And at the same time, Mr. Chair, around the same time, you were presenting to our council um, during our priorities discussion earlier this year that we should consider a ban on plastic bags. And so I encourage Liam to keep going with this. And he made it bigger and gathered more signatures and is here today on with no credit to me, but because of the hard work he's done. And I'm, I hope all of you guys are encouraged to see what you can accomplish, maybe even together, um, and or on your own, that Liam, you've done an awesome thing here tonight. I'm so proud of you. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I may say, Liam, I was incredibly impressed with your posse uh, tonight. That was a good turnout, <laughs> and uh, the fact that you gathered so many signatures, that's pretty incredible, so good work. Mm -hmm. And if you want to pass a plastic bag advocate, <laughs> talk to <laughs> Council Member Rogers. We're, we've, we're on the same wavelength, buddy. Yeah. yeah I'm in fifth grade, too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just fitting because your dad was my elementary school principal. So, <laughs> so thank you for coming this evening, Liam. All right, George Chapman. Following George, we'll have Douglas Cotant. George, it's a hard act to follow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never follow kids. It's not that bad. I encourage a good, public, vigorous uh, debate. In fact, I hope you have a very big um, 
public hearing and uh, debate on the issue, like we had at the legislature last year. Um, I encourage, you know I encourage public engagement, and I encourage that, I just have a disagreement of opinion on that, and you know that. Okay, uh, the reason I wanna talk on public comment now is because of the homeless issue. I disagree, there are people sleeping on the street, and I guarantee there will be one or two dead after tonight because they're on the street. They find little cubbies and holes to hide out in and try and keep warm, and that's an issue. And I know you care. Every one of you really care about this, but you have the ability not only to take care of these people with just a minor amount of money, and I disagree with Pamela Anderson. I don't think she understood the question you gave her, Lisa. I think an expansion facility is important for those people who want to drink, who want to do drugs, if they can go in and out at their convenience without any rules, it'll get them off the street and at least have them uh, attach some kind of a uh, relationship with a caseworker, which is their only chance to get off drugs or alcohol. So I'm asking you for a little bit more effort on storage, expansion facility, and also going to the uh, county to get more jail space. It does need that also. But $5 billion worth of projects are on hold right now downtown because of the homeless issue. $5 billion. Think of how great this city would look with $5 billion of new construction. All you have to do is prime the pump a little bit. So that's what I'm asking for. Thanks for listening. Thank you, George. Cindy Cromer followed by Jay Ingleby. Uh, next? Oh, I'm sorry, Douglas. Didn't mean to skip you. Well, sorry, Cindy. Douglas, then Cindy. Hi. Uh, well, I have a confession to make. When I'm at the grocery store, I use plastic bags. And uh, secondly, before we started this meeting, we just pledged our allegiance to the American flag. The American flag is a symbol of freedom. And I heard on the news the other night that uh, President-elect Trump wants to uh, punish Americans for burning the flag or destroying it. Uh, I'm with the idea of, of people being uh, uh, punished for burning the flag, but I'm not sure if I'm with the idea of that Trump wants to, uh, uh, to ban citizenship uh, to people that, that do that. Thirdly, the other, the other evening, I received a, um, I received a, a, an alert that in, in North Dakota, the government has decided to, uh, to not uh, build a pipeline across uh, Native American territory and and this is either uh, a short-term idea or a long-term. I hope it's long-term because uh, I think the, the federal government would feel would feel kind of bad at uh, at building pipelines or anything that destroys sacred sacred uh, land to the native to the Native Americans and other such things, and uh, and so, so that's all the comments I have. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy Cromer, followed by Jay Ingleby. Hi, my name is Cindy Cromer. Almost always there's a handout. Tonight's is a cartoon by Gary Larson about Humpty Dumpty's fall because the process for Charlie Square's proposal has been the messiest I've seen in 35 years as a land use geek. In spite of egg all over the place, the city council has steered a path through the mess. Before the ombudsman even responded, you initiated a petition to review the notification ordinance. Thank you for doing that. Then when you approved the form-based codes for Sugar House, you initiated a petition to amend the FBUN 2 zone which has been the source of much of the problem with Trolley Square's proposal. 
Thank you again. This afternoon, you addressed a permutation of process which has never occurred before by referring the proposed development agreement to the Landmarks Commission on Thursday night. In addition to all of the bizarre things that have happened since February, you are now hearing me say thank you for the third time in less than two minutes. That is one measure of how abnormal this process has been. Anytime I say thank you that often, the recipient is doing a good job or the process is in serious need of redirection or both. Thanks. I'm sorry, Cindy, I can't help but say, say what I heard was when you say thank you, we've done something wrong. <laughs> um, so I appreciate your meaning there as a city. Hello, I'm Jay Ingleby. I live resident in Glendale Park. I'm here tonight regarding shelters. I notice there's nothing on the agenda, so I'm assuming I can speak about that. Uh, the Salt Lake City Council and Mayor decided in a closed session on November 10th to approve the four sites for the new homeless shelters without letting the public discuss the sites. According to several other community councils, the council members admitted to agreeing to the sites in October. I can't find any notice on the city council meeting portal or on the RDA agenda page that there was a meeting on November 10th or that the sites were going to be selected. Whether it was legal or not, the council ignored the many promises made over the last year to citizens that they would, that they would be able to have input on a list of potential sites. The undisputed fact is that the council and mayor made the decision secretly without telling the public and ignoring promises made. In addition, Councilwoman Lisa Adams said that the public that, and also other council members have repeated the phrase that the public knowing about it would have pitted neighborhood against neighborhood, something the council and the administration sought to avoid. I can't think of a more res disrespectful way for the mayor and the council to treat the citizens that are supposed to, they are supposed to be serving. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Chair, I just I think it's important as a clarification to I, to to be very clear that no sites have been selected or announced. Uh, the last card I have, unless there's any other individual that would like to speak, is Bernard Hart. Thank you. Um, I came to talk about one thing, but in the mentioning of the camping and uh, people sleeping on the streets, uh, we run a program at the library three mornings a week with the homeless, and uh, it's fairly well attended, and we have some gentlemen there that do sleep on the streets and refuse. They're dealing with PTSD. They can't cr stand the crowded conditions. They can't stand the conditions at the road home or any other institution where people, they, the unexpected is w likely to happen. So they will stay on the streets no matter what you do and how often the police call on them, no matter how often you take your gear away from them, no matter how, what you do to encourage them to do what y you think or the police think or the social workers think is best for them, they will continue to do what they think is best for them. So there has to be another way. And I see that all the encampments now, and this has been the focus of the Pioneer Park Coalition, the Downtown Coalition for a long time are no longer on Fifth West. They've all been moved. And I hope it's not, the, the movement was, it can be framed in a lot of different ways. And when I'm in talking to the police, I understand that, that this is being done for the good of the people on the street to keep them from freezing to death and there may be heaters in the tents. Well, that's, that's all well and good. But if you take the, their place to camp and feel safe away from them, and you drive them off into the woods, away from facilities and away from treatment, away from other people that can, the emergency services, you're not really doing, you may get a few of them in the shelter, but you're driving them further out of the city and into places where they can't be harassed. And they'll be more exposed to cold. So there's always a way to talk about an action to, to, support, it, to support your perspective and what you would like to accomplish. But if you're trying to accomplish something that services the homeless community, you might try, uh, this, the city might try treating them with respect and giving them an option on a cold night. 
asking them if they would want to come inside, providing them with choices rather than telling them what they should do may go a long ways towards accomplishing what your intent is. So Time. thank you very much. Thank you. I, I don't have any other comment cards. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council? Okay. Oh, we have one. So, Becky, if you wouldn't mind getting him a card, come on up, sir, and uh, you'll have your two minutes. And then if you wouldn't mind filling out a comment card afterwards and giving it to Becky, that would be great. Just as I was sitting here thinking about it. Um, I'm sorry, can you give me your name? My name is Jason Seaton. Um, I live in Poplar Grove, just west of here. Uh, in, in our area, we have a school that has no signals for crossing no speed limit. Uh, designation for that school zone. There are crosswalks, but nothing says that it, it is a school zone. Uh, that school's been there for, I don't know, maybe 40 years. Um, I'm wondering why hasn't anything been done about that? I've talked to the mayor's office. I don't know if any, I'm, I'm bringing this up out of the blue just because I was just thinking about it. So what do I do about that? There's no, there's nothing. There's nothing that says that there's a school there. After the meeting, and, and just so you know, this has been brought up to the Salt Lake City School District, and they're, they're we're working with with uh, the city to try and, okay. and look into that. Just to be clear, that school is on uh, Fourth South and almost Redwood Road. Okay. So, Thank it. you very much. And Becky, uh, staff will get you a card, and you can fill it out. Anyone else that would like to address the council? Okay, we're moving on to new business, and I'm going to look to the city attorney just to make sure, because this is a little little wonky, and make sure we get it all correct, right? I'm gonna be looking at you, Margaret. And I will be looking at you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So um, just to ensure a smoother ride ahead, we thought I'd give you a quick roadmap. Your one and only item under new business is something you will be doing with your LBA hats on, and that's considering a resolution to appoint the uh, new budget director as Mary Beth Thompson. You'll then switch to unfinished business, and the first item under that you will be doing as the city council, this step needs to happen first. It's you considering whether to direct the LBA to adopt a parameters resolution. And then under F2, you'll see that you're being asked to convene as the LBA and to consider a couple things, including minutes, the parameters resolution, and setting the date. There is a motion sheet that may help you under F1. Um, I'm also here to help you, as is the treasurer's office and the finance department, because we all want you to get this correct, as do you. So hopefully that helps. So, so then it goes, it goes, it goes LBA, city council, back to LBA. And then LBA through six, right? And then we go to LBA through. Oh, I'm sorry, through three. Three. Okay. Correct. Great. Mr. Chair. Here we go. I move that the uh, council recess as the city council and reconvene as the board of directors of the local building authority. Second. The motion has been made by council member Penfold and second by council member Kitchen. Uh, any discussion to reconvene as LBA? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We are now the local building authority. Mr. Chair, I move that the local building authority adopt a director position for Mary Beth Thompson. Second. Uh, council member. Uh, Director Penfold uh, made a motion to adopt and a second by Director Luke. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we are done with E1. We Mr. need to Mr. Chair. I move, we, I move that we uh, reconvene as the city council. I think we need to. Oh, we, that we. That we um, recess. That we yeah, reset, there, that we recess as the local building authority and, and then, then reconvene as the Salt Lake City Council. Second. Motion's been made by Director Luke and seconded by uh, Director Penfold. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We are now the City Council again. On to item F1, unfinished business. Mr. Chair, I move that the City Council adopt the resolution directing the Board of Directors of the Local Building Authority to issue its lease revenue bonds. Second. Uh, motion's been made by Council Member Penfold and seconded by Council Member Luke. Any discussion in re regards to that? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, and that passes unanimously. Mr. Chair, just like magic, I'd like to move the <laughs> city council uh, recess and reconvene as the local building authority. Second. 
Uh, motion's been made by Council Member Penfold, second by Council Member Luke. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are now the local bil building authority. We are looking for a motion for F2. Mr. Uh, Chair, I move that the local building authority uh, board of directors approve the, the meeting minutes of Tuesday, July 12th, 2016, and Tuesday, November 15th, 2016. Second. Second. Uh, motion by Director Penfold and second by Director Johnston. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those minutes are approved. We're on to F3, still as the LBA. Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I move that uh, we adopt the parameters resolution and set a public hearing date. Oh, wait. I move that the board adopt the parameters resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of up to $10 million of the lease revenue bonds and set the date for the related public hearing for Tuesday, January 17th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Second. A motion by Director Luke and second by Director uh, Penfold. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. We are looking to. Mr. Chair, I move that we adjourn as the Board of Directors of the Local Building Authority and reconvene as the Salt Lake City Council. Second. Yes. A motion by Director Penfold, second by Director Luke. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And like that, we are now the City Council. Congratulations. Thank you. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Sweet. We are on to F4, uh, Housing Trust Fund Loan Request for $1.5 million from Give Development for 4th North. Mr. Chair, I move that the Council adopt a resolution authorizing a loan for $1.525 million from the Salt Lake City Housing Trust Fund to North 4th LLC for the North 4th Project. Second. Motion by Council Member Penfold, second by Council Member Mendenhall. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, m Mr. Chair, if I may, I just am um, excited about this uh, opportunity. Give has a, a history of doing really great projects in the city, and one of the things I love about their projects is their commitment to uh, truly do um, mixed income housing within their projects, and uh, that that commitment continues with this proposal as well. So it has a significant uh, uh, number of units uh, for 25% uh, AMI, and uh, most of them fit in that sort of 40 to 50 range of AMI. So uh, I think this is going to be a great project for the neighborhood. Stan, this is District 3? Uh, this uh, is District 3, um, which uh, is my district. So <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it's affordable housing in District 3, which is what makes it, it really exciting, actually. And one quick question. Do you know how many additional affordable units this will add to our stock? I don't remember the 80. number. Nick, do you remember the number? 80. Aaron knows. She 80. said 80. 80? 80 124 total, units. But at a whole range of AMI. Right. Yeah. Thank I you. I believe there are five or 10 at 20. What I like about Give is they consistently add some very, very low AMI in their projects. They've been really good about doing that. Council Member Mendenhall. I thought you were going to say it, but I hope that we see another great piece of public art on this future building because they've done a fantastic job of that in the past too. That mural, that and now tradition we'll stop of a making mural it like a work session the, yeah. and, <laughs> and vote. Uh, before we vote on this, I just want to second uh, Council Member Menden, uh, Penfold. The Give does a fantastic job with the developments. They look good. You, you uh, it's just something that you would you'd see downtown, but it's actually going to be on. On, uh, in District 3 just just east of I-15. So it's a, a great project that I'm glad that we're, we're participating in. So all in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. We're on to F5, a housing trust fund request for an additional 500000 for JF Capital for the Granary Place and an amended deal. Mr. Chair? Yes. I move the council adopt a resolution authorizing a loan for $500,000 from the Salt Lake City Housing Trust Fund to JF Capital for the Granary Place Apartment Project. Second. Uh, a motion's been made by Council Member Kitchen and second by Council Member Johnston. Any discussion? Speaking of affordable housing, this is a District 4 project, so I'm excited about this and hope we can approve this. Uh, anything else? Any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes unanimously as well. We are on to the Last item in the F category, F6, disposition of lost, misplaced, and unclaimed property. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt an ordinance amending chapter 2.10 
Article Four. Four. It's a Roman numeral, so I had to pause. Of the Salt Lake City Code relating to lost, mislaid, and unclaimed property. Second. Motion by Councilmember Penfold, second by Councilmember Kitchen. Is there any discussion in regards to this? Seeing Question. none. Okay. Question. Sorry, maybe Margaret. I don't remember process on this one. This was a written a briefing. Written briefing. Actually. written briefing. That's why, and no ordinance. Uh, and I'm sorry, no public hearing because what? Um, it's not required. Council didn't request it. These are changes to city code to bring it in line with clean up. Uh, changes to Utah code that were. Thank you for made that clarification. Previously. Gotcha. Thanks, I'm ready. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. We're on to the consent agenda. I Mr. Move. Chair, uh, uh, Council Member Mendenhall has a motion. I move we adopt the consent agenda. Second. Uh, motion by Council Member Mendenhall and second by Council Member Penfold to adopt the consent agenda. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that wraps up our meeting. So we're going to wait.